Oh my gosh, is this the first dregs of 2019? I think it is. Hello everyone, I am making it for dregs, uh, even though it's been a really, really long night and a really long month and uh, I'm a little tired, I am ready to get back in the saddle and bring you dregs again where I taste literally the dregs from the end of the night. Um, thank you all so much for the loving support that I received after I posted the video last night about my new job here. So I'm very excited. I'm the new wine director here at Press. I've got two awesome sommeliers that just started, Jody and Carrie, you'll be meeting them soon uh, when I release the next video from our field trips week. But I wanted to get back into doing dregs because one, they're so much fun, and two, a lot of you have messaged like, hey, where have they been? Are they coming back? What's going on? They're back. Um, I'm ready to go. We are back and uh, we had to get their premiere week, which is a huge, huge deal here in Napa Valley. Um, but without any further ado, super, super cool wine tonight. I thought this was a perfect way to, to kick it off. This is truly one of my favorite wines in Napa Valley. This is uh, Phelps Isley. So hi from Switzerland. That's so cool. YouTube is so cool. I love that you can like talk to people from all around the world. Um, Isley. So Isley Vineyard is up in Calistoga. I think this is probably the most special, wonderful vineyard in all of Napa Valley. Uh, tons and tons of history here. I'll show you the bottle very, very close so you can see it. Um, but basically, the Isley Vineyard was a vineyard that was sourced by sourced from um, by Phelps by Joseph Phelps uh, by Ridge by Con Creek back in the 70s. Some of the more prominent bottles that you see today are are from Joseph Phelps, uh, made by Walter Shug, and they are some of my favorite bottlings that exist to this day. Uh, 78 Phelps Isley is one of my favorite wines of all time. This is one of the last vintages of Phelps Isley. So basically what happened was the Isleys decided that they were going to sell that vineyard uh, in the early 90s, gave the option to the Phelps, the Phelps declined, the Arajos bought it, and that is how um, the Arajos became Arajo Isley Vineyard. They since sold that wine and started their own label, um, and sort of reverted back to the name. So it's now just called Isley Vineyard. And that is owned by a very famous Chateau in Bordeaux. Um, you might know it, Chateau Latour. Uh, so they own the Isley Vineyard in Calistoga. And now they are bottling wines called Isley from that vineyard. So kind of a complicated history back and forth. Hopefully I explained it properly. I am a little tired, so bear with me. Um, that said, so that's what the, in this glass here. However, what I have here is the 91 drags from the Phelps Isley. And like I said, this is, I think the last vintage, there might've been a 92 as well. I know the Araujo's made a 92 and I think they both made a 92 between Phelps and Araujo. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. This is 91 Phelps Isley vineyard. Absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning bottle. So excited. Oh, oh my gosh. Super, super minty on the nose. A little bit of violet, very floral. These wines, the Isley wines, if there's one through line that will take you through the 70s all the way through today, which it's right here, it's florality. These wines love to just express themselves. It's lots and lots of deep purple flowers. So it has this really beautiful elegance of the nose where it's super floral and it's really aromatic, it's really pretty, but then you get to the palette and it's like, it's such a powerhouse. Let's get the palette. Mm. Dense, brooding, big, big cassis fruit, big raspberry fruit, really dark berry, plum, purple, black fruit. And then at the finish, oh, there it is. All of this like minty, herbaceous, aromatic, herbal floral thing that happens it's a wine that just wants to continue for forever i'm gonna go back absolutely gorgeous structured finesse i can't believe how dark this wine is it's got acid for days absolutely stunning bottle of wine 1991 so it's got a few years on it um we are down to the dregs and i will remind everyone that once you start getting down the dregs things start to get a little bit um grainier obviously you can see some of the sediment in there but they do start to get a little bit darker a little bit more bitter as you're sitting on the actual sediment of the wine so sometimes that can skew the per your perception of how that wine is tasting i do want to taste next to it the current vintage 2015 ice leaf vineyard uh that's being now, now made today because I, I do think it's worthwhile on the nose, you're still getting a ton of those florals, a little less of the mintiness. I do think it takes a little while for that mintiness to come through. Um, 
for whatever reason. I don't know exactly why. But it is a big, gorgeous, gorgeous, concentrated, floral, a lot of those violets again on that wine. This is a very expensive bottle of wine. It's 15 Isley. I think retail it's around $600. Um, so not an inexpensive wine. This wine is really hard to find if you can find it. Um, I think you're looking again kind of in the $600 realm, but um, it's really more about the rarity of that wine than anything else. Mm. Okay, well, that's drags, kids. Um, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna get some sleep. Hopefully my bags are not too heavy. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know what you liked about it. Tell me what you wanna see more of. Let me know um, if there's something I'm missing. I'm super excited to do this hopefully more often and I'll see you all super soon. Have a good night, bye.